In this tutorial, I will explain how to work with trees in OARM. Trees are used to represent hierarchical information. Probably the simplest way to implement trees in OARM is to use the expansion feature of OARM queries. For more details about queries, please watch the queries tutorial. This feature has been implemented in the Sales Portal sample application. So let's see how it has been done there. In this application, we have the product order object representing a custom order. The product order contains order line items, which are represented by the line item object. The relationship is specified in the line items attribute of the product order object. Each line item refers to a product being purchased. A product is represented by the product object and the relationship is specified in the product attribute of the line item object. So we have the following hierarchy. Product order, line items, product. We also have a query called product order all. This query shows all product orders and it is called from the dashboard of the application. Let's look at the expansion of rows property of the query. We see here then when, the, when a row is expanded, a WRAM shows the default form of the product order object. Let's see how this form looks like. The first section of the form shows line items that the order contains. If we look at how this attribute is displayed, we will see a standard grid. So the form shows a table of line items. If we look at the expansion of rows property, we will see that the system runs a process. And if we look at this process, we will see that the process shows the form of the related product. So the user expands a row with the order, the form of the order shows a list of line items, and if you expand a line item, you see the form of the corresponding product. Let's see this in action. So now I am in the sales portal application, I click on the products and orders, and I see the list of my orders. When I expand the order, I can see the list of line items that belongs to this order. And if I expand the line item, I can see the details of the product. So in general, if you have a parent object, you can use the expansion feature of the query to show its children. And then for each child, you can show each of its children and so on. When you use the expansion feature, you usually display quite a lot when, the, when a row is expanded. It can be a form or a query that shows a table of items. There is nothing wrong with that, but there is also another, more lightweight way of representing hierarchical information, where each expanded row is just one line of text. This feature is only available for displaying references. Let's look at it. Let's add a button to the product order object that will display a form of the order where line items and products are represented as a lightweight tree. When the user clicks on a line item, the product that line item refers to is displayed. To do this, 
I will create a special form for the product order object. I will call it tree. I will delete all attributes from this form and put the line items attribute into the form. I will change the widget type of this attribute from grid to tree. Let's specify a height for the tree and then go to the tree contents property. If we accept the default options, the tree will show all references of all objects that it finds along the way. For example, a line item refers to its parent order, so it will show the order in the tree. We do not want this because we already know the order since we are looking at its form. So we click on this radiant button here and now we can choose exactly which objects and which references will be shown in the tree. In our case we will only show line items and products. And for each object we can specify in detail how its references will be handled by a tree. Even if an attribute refers to the allowed object type, we can exclude it from consideration here. If I select the Every Instance is a Leaf radio button, I can stop where I am from considering any reference attributes of the current node, and it will always be displayed as a leaf node. The reverse can be achieved if I untick the display instances of the object in the tree checkbox. This will stop where I am from displaying any instances of the selected object, but it will still consider its reference attributes, as indicated here. This can be very useful if you have some intermediate objects that you don't want to show in the tree, but whose references you do want to show. There are also some other options here. You can specify icons for tree nodes and allow or disallow drag and drop. For our tree, if we are looking at the line items reference, we, want, we only want to see the product, but not the product order. And the product reference doesn't have its own references, so we do not need to select anything. Now let's just add an operation to the product orders query to display this form. Let's see now how this works. So I put the version under test and log into the browser. Let's go to some order and click on the button that we have added. We can now see our form with the tree of line items displayed. When we click on the line item, we see the referred product. Note that every record in the tree is represented by one line, which shows one or more attributes of the object. Attributes are separated by spaces. Here we can see quite a few attributes for both line items and products. Let's only display quantity for the line item and product name for the product. 
To do this, we go back to the form where the tree is displayed. Attributes displayed for the topmost object of the hierarchy, in our case, the list of line items, is controlled in the displayed attributes property. So here we select quantity only. Attributes displayed for other levels of hierarchy are controlled in the presentation options of the corresponding reference attributes. For example, if we want to control how the product of the line item is displayed, we need to go to the product attribute in the line item object. and select attributes to be displayed in the presentation options. Here we select name only. Let's see how this looks now. So when we log in and display our form, we can see that each line item is represented by the quantity only and each product by name only. Of course, this example with line items and products is an artificial one. You would probably not do it like that in the real application. However, it's a good illustration of how lightweight trees work. And here is an example that you would probably use in the real application. This example shows you the power of AwareIM trees for displaying hierarchical objects, that is, objects that refer to themselves. Suppose we want to show to the user the ancestry tree, where for each person we can show his children, and for each child we can show his own children, and so on. Here I have prepared a small application and in this application, the central object is the person object. Every person knows about his parent and also children. Note that both parent and children attributes refer to the same object person. I have added a form for our object that allows adding children to a parent and I have also prepared some data. Let's have a look. So I log into this application. I have added a query that shows all people that we have. If we click Edit, we will see the form of the person object. And there we can see his or her parent and the immediate children. We can add children by clicking the Add New button. I have added one grandparent, John Smith, who has two children, Roger and Mary. Both Roger and Mary have their own children. Let's now add a tab to our form that shows the entire ancestry tree, not only the immediate children, but also children of every child, and so on. So we go to the form and create a new form section. The caption will be called Ancestry Tree. Now I'll go to the form designer and delete all attributes from this form section and then reinsert the children attribute. I then change the widget of the attribute to tree. Go to the tree contents and select the person object as the, ref as the object to be displayed in the tree. And for this person object, I will only display children reference, but not the parent reference. Let's also specify the height 
of the tree. We will also turn off the header for the tree. Let's see how this looks. So when we log in and show the form of the grandparent, John Smith, we can now see a new tab, Ancestry Tree, which shows a neat looking form with all descendants of John Smith. Note that since the tree shows one object only, it shows the same attributes for every record in the tree. So the attributes are displayed as nice looking columns.